My name's Elaine. Hi, my name is Elaine. Hi, my name is Elaine. Elaine is our name. The village is like being on vacation every day. The Disney World for retirees. It is like going off to college. You come here to live. You don't come here to pass away. There is no place like this. This is Nirvana. I'm just saying for me, it hasn't been the fantasy land that I thought it would be. For, you know, for reasons that are, some are true to my own self, you know? Oh my God. <laughs> I think that when you live in the villages, you're acting the part. Surely, everybody's life is not perfect. Now that we're in the villages, Reggie's sense of reality has become even more out there. I came down here to meet a nice looking lady with some money that I'd be not embarrassed to be seen on the street with. You need a handyman, don't you? I don't care. <laughs> Who am I? You got the answer. No, I don't. They're in you. Who am I? Somebody found me out. I got in trouble with the law last night. You're charged with possession of cocaine. Who am I? You make me sick. I think I lose no matter what you do. If you want to avoid trouble, don't come here. There has to be more than just surviving. It's a new awakening. Go! This is the last hurrah. I'm about ready to call it quits. We have too much fun down here, you know? Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Okay. All right. Hi, Lance. Hello. We, we, we lost a lot of, uh, you know, like uh, uh, a lot of the uh, treasure of, of our opening comments uh, where you were complimenting. Oh, damn. You can still see the bed a little bit. Of, there, that's better. I, I, <laughs> I ordered uh, some furniture today. Anyway, uh, where are you now? Are, are you in Florida? I'm in I'm in Florida. Yeah, I'm in I'm in Miami currently. Oh. Um, I just uh, I'm, I'm quarantining. I just finished a, a, a shoot in LA, and now I'm just I'm in a, I'm in Hollywood, Florida, which is which is a it's a fun place if you've ever been here. No, I've not been to Hollywood, uh, Florida. I uh, my my deepest connection to Florida would I've been all over Florida, but my deepest connection to Florida would have to be a, a retirement community that's a little bit further south. Uh, mm. by southeast of the villages which is in west palm beach oh huh. so what's it uh what's it called my grandparents live not so far away from there um century village century so, village okay yeah 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 yeah. so may, that might be yeah. as the villages which your documentary some kind of heaven is about is is the maybe the largest and maybe the richest i don't know or fanciest uh you know uh, retirement community, but I think Century could be one of the oldest, if not the oldest. I'm not sure. That's an interesting. The, I, I, you may be right about that. I'm not totally sure. I, 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 I do know. You know, that there, there's like a long lineage of of retirement communities that came before the villages. There's like, um, I mean, the Del Webb community, Sun City was. I feel like literally, mm -hmm. if you look at like the older. Um, I found all these old archival videos of, of like the, you know, in the, in the 50s of, uh, of, of how it, of all, you know, how they were advertising. Um, and it literally looks identical to the villages. It's almost like the villages uh, took this, the, the, the Sun City approach. Uh, they they kind of copied and pasted it onto like this whole, you know, big land in, 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 uh, in, in you know, in, yeah, in central Florida. And then I think the, the one thing they did do, which was which was genius, was was get the um, this this uh, architecture design firm called Forec to basically help them, uh, you know, do all the Dis the, the Disney fying of the place. And they hired this company to kind of write the fake history with them and oh. you know, do all the stuff. 
Um, but but wow. you know, it's it's definitely not the richest. I'd say that. I mean, there are definitely okay. wealthy enclaves. It's just it's so big that it's almost like there are there are parts of the city that are like the historic district is what they call it is sort of like the uh, the like which is yeah it's like kind of. Uh, um, but that, that's like that the historic district is like the the lower income sort of housing there and then they have um you know they have they have kind of mid-range houses yeah and, then, and there are tiers exactly and then they have you know upscale ones as well well let's take a baby step backward because um so i set it up properly yeah also i, I wanted to try to get uh, i was while well, you guys came on and i don't know if any of our publicists are on at the moment but uh, just remind me of the date first, uh, Some Kind of Heaven, which is the documentary, date. your first, which is really remarkable. Uh, Thank but, you. Yeah, it, it comes it comes out everywhere on uh, virtually on the 15th. So now right, you would know, too. Friday. I forgot. Yeah, 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 yeah. You made the and film. It's out, today, it's out today in Florida in, in theaters, just uh, like uh, before before the release next no, week. That's fair. So, right. So uh, it's a week from today, right? 15th. Yep. Uh, as we record this on the uh, uh, this on the 8th of January. Um, wow. Okay. So, so yeah. So, and you, uh, um, it, it, this particular, uh, as you describe the villages, which is this retirement community, they seem to be somewhat, um, occupied by uh, a, a kind of a, a fictional sort of a version of itself too, which is interesting, you know, like, like creating a, story behind it uh, uh, an origin or or so, you know like uh and then you said the disney like sort of the disneyfied part of it and maybe talk about what you mean by that for people who haven't seen the documentary yet yeah you know i mean so th this is sort of like i think one of the things that probably makes the villages what it is and, and you know not only extremely successful but also just you know totally unlike any other retirement community in the in 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 America, I sound like I'm giving an advertise, doing an advertisement for them now or something. But I do, you know, this is one of the reasons I was I was interested in making the film in the first place. Um, was was that they that when they were kind of designing the 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 what what the retirement community could be, um, you know, at first was a bunch of, like the, you know, in its early incarnations, it was like a uh, kind of a trailer park, and then eventually, as they started getting more and more people that would move. Um, they, the, the, the creator of the villages, Harold Schwartz, he was very inspired by Walt Disney and he wanted to uh, create a, a, a world that reminded the baby boomers of their childhood. Um, okay. I think he was, I, you know, I, I honestly don't even know if he, what, what guided him to that decision. If, if it was only, maybe it was just that he loved Epcot and he loved everything that was going on uh, with Disney World, but he, you know, he was, he kind of predicted the next, you know, few decades of what of what would uh, what America would look like, where you have a whole generation of of, of baby boomers that are um, maybe feeling a little disenfranchised, maybe feeling like they don't really have anywhere to go. Their families have moved on. They themselves have retired. Um, they want a place for themselves, and what better place to go to than a place that reminds you of how you were when you were a child and right. a lot of the activities and the suburban kind of delights. So what there that actually also yeah, I, I apologize. I, I, I was going to say also, there's this aspect to this uh, that they they lived through a very prosperous time, and there was a lot of what do you call like uh, um, money you could spend. Uh, you had a lot of entertain. I, I you know you know what I'm trying to say. Like in other words, uh, uh, these people when they were a bit younger perhaps experienced a certain amount of comfort where, you know, at that age, uh, they kind of aged during this period of maybe uh, going out a lot, enjoying their their life. There's a lot of, you know, it, like the generations before war, working, the baby boomers yeah. kind of came up in a, a very different sort of environment. And right. and it, you can sort of see it in their, the way they sort of, the way that the, the, the retirement community is catered their interests and this idea of their younger days, maybe in terms of just uh, they had the time and the money to maybe uh, be more athletic and more uh, out, out go, um, you know, uh, more. No, to totally. Time, it, it, it may not even be a thing fitness. that's so, so specific, honestly, to, to the baby. I mean, I mean, I guess given that the baby boomers are, are sort of the, the generation that's retiring right now, I, I, but I, but I think honestly, it's, it's, it's a, um, it's, it's a desire that, that is completely understandable. This is a, this is a, a place that, 
I think most retirement communities, they don't have the amount of activities or, you know, levels of engagement of, you know, the, the whole, the, it's almost like Margaritaville on acid or, or, or on steroids or something, maybe a little bit of both. Uh, but just this idea that you can kind of, that paradise awaits you, that you're, you know, you're the, the best years of your life. Uh, you, you, you haven't experienced them yet. Uh, they can be found and relived um, at the villages. And I think um, to me yeah. as a filmmaker, that was something that was just like, um, you know, I had made a film about a man on a cruise ship, a, a retiree who exclusively lived These on are your on cruise ship. projects. Yes, yeah. for, for 20 years. And I, and I kind of was fascinated. I began to be fascinated by this idea of, you know, how, yeah, how, how, how retirees, uh, but, you know, even more broadly, how Americans are, are choosing to spend uh, you know, choosing to kind of isolate themselves inside of these, you know, um, these fantasy lands of their own creation, the ways in which we kind of attempt to uh, siphon ourselves off from reality and, and live inside of a, you know, of, of a thing or a place uh, or a type of li a line of thinking that is, uh, that is much more agreeable and, and, and kind of erases all of the bad things in life. So seeing 120,000 people kind of move from the north to Florida to the villages um, and live inside of a place that was designed to remind them of their youth, that to me was like enough as a setting to, to, to kind of make me interested in making a film about the villages. And it's interesting because what, what could be the draw may not necessarily be what, what uh, ends up sustaining you because, yeah. you know, the, some of these retirees uh, find that they feel the sense of emptiness um, or, you know, um, that there's something that's, I mean, you have, the film centers on, I guess, th three? Yeah, it's, 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 it's three storylines and four, three four subjects, yeah, yeah. It's better to put it, yeah, right, because one, one of your storylines involves a couple, and uh, which is Anne and Reggie, right? And yeah. Anne is very happy in this community because she's a very, uh, she's a social and she also really likes to uh, um, uh, revel in, 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 in um, working out, right? And everything yeah, that- Yeah, playing uh, pickleball, yeah, exactly. Everything, yeah, and everything that the, 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 uh, the villages has to offer. Whereas Reggie um, has uh, some, sort of uh feels sort of a haunted guy you know he's um uh, has a, 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 I have to be careful how much I give away but he's he has a um you know um he's a dick he has addictions to drug addiction problem I mean that much we can say right yeah 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 and so like why would you need any reason to escape from paradise like why, <laughs> why would you need something to escape from when you're in paradise right yeah um, yeah yeah unless it's it is a kind of a facade. I mean, and for him, maybe that's his problem. Uh, but it explores this couple who, you know, and she sticks by him. It's very difficult, but we watch that period of where he's, you know, struggling with more with should he just like try to clean up or not? And he's probably in his, I'm guessing, late seventies or eighties already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he he's in his uh, mid seventies. Okay, mid seventies. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, I mean, it, it's, it's it, you know, I, I think that was a draw for me in, in, in wanting to follow them was um, regardless of, of where they lived, it was, it, was, it was seeing these two people who are very different from one another who have been married for 43 years, you know, wow. um, that move to a place like the villages. I think you know, the villages allows you to kind of tap into or, 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 or discover an interest and in, you know, maybe you had a hobby that you had picked up in your 20s, but you haven't been able to kind of re-engage with it ever, you know, ever since uh, having to take a job or something. So here's a couple that they, they moved to the villages. You have, you know, Anne, who it kind of fits maybe more inside of the, the, the typical profile of a villager. She, she plays pickleball. She has a lot of friends. She delights in kind of the community that the villages offers. And then you have Reggie, who's someone who really doesn't fit into any of the things that he's tried out. He doesn't really enjoy, uh, you know, kind of the group minded activities. He wants to be, uh, his interest is psychedelic drugs and like Easter's Easter okay. spirituality. Um, right. And, and I, th I think those two things, um, to me, I was just like fascinated how, how someone could have those types of ideas and interests 
uh, and still exist inside of a place that is, you know, in my mind, a little bit as artificially constructed as as the villages is. I want to pay you a compliment in that you don't judge your any of these people, and we haven't gotten to the rest of them, but but we we don't judge. We, you know, we don't see you judging as a filmmaker. In fact, Reggie's is. You, you almost feel like, you know, whereas he maybe has the problem, the quote problem with drugs, but in a sense, we also feel like, well, this is a guy on a spiritual journey on some level, maybe he's fooling himself, but it seems like he really is interested in discovering something that, that he, where he feels kind of like he has been um, limited or that, you know, or just hasn't finished his journey. And in a way, his life with his wife is just as much kind of feels like maybe it's holding him back. She, she's experienced the same thing because she wants her husband to be available to her and mm. be the, present and happy. You know, maybe being happy is present, you know? So they're both kind of, you, you wonder, well, maybe they're, they're on separate journeys. So they're both kind of right. figuring how to stay together, maybe share a journey together. Neither is right or wrong, you know? Right. And then um, there's Barbara who is, um, widow and who's struggling she wants to stay in the villages but it's also she has to figure out how to afford to do that and so she works she has a job and it's it's a struggle and at the same time she's lonely and uh trying to meet somebody and you mentioned um margaritaville earlier which i was going to say was a nice segue to her yeah. her potential uh romantic uh partner who seems preoccupied with Jimmy Buffett. Um, yes. He's, <laughs> yeah, he's, he's a and margaritas. Parrot head. Yeah, he's, he's, he's uh, a parrot head. Obsessed with, uh, obsessed. with, with the, the Buffett lifestyle. Right. Which, which, uh, of, of which margaritas plays a central role. <laughs> uh, but he just, it just like his presence and he's, I'm sure he's a wonderful man, but his presence only underlying makes her probably feel even lonelier because yeah. you know to be with somebody who doesn't get you um can make you actually feel lonelier it's easier to be by yourself and sometimes <laughs> yeah yeah you know? yeah but she's a very sympathetic character too uh and then the one of the very beautiful moments again i'm, I'm careful how i present stuff because i don't want to give things away but she let's put it this way she's find some uh, level of of camaraderie and uh um company with uh, this acting uh, is that that's part yeah. of the villages too of course right right yeah yeah it's which is tremendous i mean and what we see with her and her growth in there is very moving you know you must have thought yeah. wow you had this incredible moment um she she yeah she gave a hell of a performance me. you know in that in that monologue she delivers i think like um it was funny because i didn't really know what she was delivering or you know there's a, there's a scene in the film where barbara uh is after just a lot of setbacks uh finally decides she's been at this acting club several times you see her in the film at the acting club not participating and finally at the end she decides to go up and she delivers this like show-stopping monologue and I, I remember it's like you know where the hell is this thing from and she write this and then it turns out it was from like American Horror Story and it, you know, just like some is random it really yeah, some random scene. I was like, wow, you know, I mean, it really shows like uh, if any directors are out there listening to this, please hire hire her. She's an amazing. Um, you you know, will get somebody who's entirely committed. Yeah, it, it, you'll get someone who's entirely committed. And she has a lot of just she she's just a blank canvas. I think she's like immediate. You know, she 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 can do anything. She's hilarious. She's a, a great dramatic performer. Um, I think she 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 just all she wants to do is act and i think she uh proves it it's like almost her acting uh demo reel or something is in that one that one monologue scene um well maybe when you do your narrative version of of the film you can <laughs> ask her to play herself oh man well i feel like in some ways this this is you know i feel like this is the, there is yeah the, it's interesting. I feel like um, initially when we were first making this, I was like, man, there are so many narrative ideas I'd love to try out. And, uh, you know, after making this documentary, and then I think as we kept working on it, I just was like, you know what, it, I feel like the best way to kind of honor the setting of this of the world here is to kind of fuse the two not to say that, you know, the narrative qualities of this film are, are like fake or scripted. It's all, you know, it's all real. But but um, but the ways in which we're kind of stylizing certain elements and scenes and you know, th that, that, that was important to me. It had to come from the place, you know, it had to come from the fact that there's this sort of, 
you know, unreality of the place or hyper reality that the place kind of, you know, delights in when you're there. And, and when, when, when you, when you're living there, it like completely, you know, you feel like you're completely cut off from the rest of the world. So I wanted to kind of find a way to uh, get that feeling and, and intersperse it throughout, you know, the frames of the film, the, the casting of the film, the editing of the film kind of from, from top to bottom. We, we had to drench it in the, the village's secret sauce, you know? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, now, of course, we can't leave out Dennis, who is yeah maybe the most um, um, I don't know. We'll probably get the most attention, is my guess, of your different characters because of the circumstances. This is a perpetual uh, man child in a way. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Who, who also probably is, I'm guessing, well into his seventies. Eighties. Eighties. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I'm not, this one we can't give away uh, because there is a moment late in his story line, which uh, it's a phone call with somebody. In, uh, we just have time for one. More. We're getting low on time, unfortunately, but I, we can't give away this moment where he's on the phone with somebody very close in his life. Uh, but it, it was like, what? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, his, his situation is uh, living in a van. Yeah. Pretty scary situation. Well, for him, not so much. I mean, it's interesting for him. Well, you know, no, but for us. Oh, as, for us, for people sure. People who are sure. wondering how we're going to, what our future is look like, you know, in this economy. Yeah, no, totally. I mean, I, I, you know, I, I think for him, it's, it's, this is why I thought he was a, no matter his age, I thought he was a fascinating guy. He'd been living in a van for, you know, years of his life. And he's a guy right. who's masquerading as a villager. He's an interloper. He doesn't exist there. He doesn't belong there. Uh, and he just kind of, you know, exists on the margins. He takes little crumbs from where he can get it. He showers at the open, you know, at, at the public rec centers and everyone's gone and is sleeping. Um, right. he, 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 he's a guy who knows how the system works. He's very intelligent and he's, you know, he's driven from California to Florida to find a wealthy widow to shack up with, which is uh, uh, probably not the most noble reason to go. Um, and, you know, it's practical. It is practical, perhaps, um, but you see him kind of, uh, you know, you know, yeah, misfire and maybe find some success later in the film. But you know, the, the, the interest to me about with him was was something more than just, hey, here's this crazy character. I wanted to kind of plumb the, the depths of his of his uh, of, of his choices and really and really know what was going on. Sure, and I, and again, I want to repeat that. You know, he, he would be somebody who could be. Um, one could mock or um, look down on on some level because of the circumstances and the film certainly doesn't do that. Um, I, I have one one more thing. We're talking to uh, Lance Oppenheim who is the director of Some Kind of Heaven which opens um, next Friday, the 15th of January. Uh, 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 um, <clears throat> you, the, the executive producer and executive producer on the project, of course, Darren Arimowski. So as a film guy, I kind of have to just ask about how you, uh, the film also, I meant to mention, premiered at Sundance, was and also closing night film at Doc Fortnight, which I'm a fan of. Uh, I, 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 how did that relationship come about? How did you sign on? Um, that must be a nice perk. Yeah, he, you know, so I, I, uh, I've been a fan of Darren's films for like most of my entire life and uh, anytime I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of someone's, you know, stuff, I try to get in touch with them, no matter how, uh, you know, you know, no matter how successful they are, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm kind of like the, I don't know if you've ever seen Election, but when Tracy Flick just write, likes to write letters to people she admires, I, I did, did, did the same thing. It's a weird comparison I'm making to me and Tracy Flick, although I do love that film. But anyway, <laughs> I um oh. I, I was I searched for Darren's email online for for years. There was a similar kind of I you know I got in touch with the New York Times in a similar way. I had you know that they had an open submission forum to to kind of uh, you know submit your documentaries, and I sent a bunch of them, never heard back. And then I kind of just found the producer's email and sent them a personal note about how much they you know their their, their series meant to me and eventually I ended up getting through to them. And same with Darren, I had, I found his email, you know, the email didn't work, tried a different email. Finally, my emails weren't getting bounced back. And for almost, you know, three years, I would send an, e one, an email probably once every uh, three months. And I was just very persistent. 
eventually one of his um his creative executives kind of uh found one of my notes and then you know, one thing went to the next he we got coffee i showed him what i had been working on i had kind of a sample sizzle sizzles worth of material like a six minute short uh from this film and i um and uh you know to my surprise they really sparked to it they showed it to darren i met with darren um one thing led to the next you know we seemed to have a really kind of good rapport and um you know it was a great collaboration darren doesn't really he doesn't slap his name onto projects all so often and i think he you know when he does get involved in projects he's not really he's not interested in getting involved as like a vanity executive producer like he he, he likes to get his you know he likes to get in there and roll up his sleeves so when we needed him to he watched probably about like five or six cuts of the film and gave a lot of notes um, and a lot of conversations about what was going on in the movie, how to make certain things clearer. Um, and it was, you know, it was a really great, it was just a great collaboration. I'm, I'm uh, working out with him on another project right now. And uh, it's a, hopefully a relationship that will continue uh, far beyond uh, this movie. Um, I urge people to see some kind of heaven and um, it's, it's, it delivers a lot of wonderful moments and uh, a, a real sort of impact um, emotionally and otherwise. Um, so congratulations. And uh, I'm glad I saw it and, and I'm glad this worked out today. And uh, I hope you come back on. Thank you. you yeah, I, 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 I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you for, uh, thank you for having me. It was a pleasure to meet you. Same here. Yeah. Have a good weekend. You too. Take care. You too. All right. Perfect. Thank you, Adam. All right. Thank you.